<laughs> Kate, I hope you're in there watching this. <laughs> All right, and hey, what is up, everyone? We are live, guys. Welcome to what, Beastly what Thoughts Live, is episode seven. Seven. Thank you, Beastly. He already knew I was going to screw that up. Anyways, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are back again once this week. We have a lot of awesome stuff to talk about. Uh, we and got... not so awesome stuff because some things happened that weren't really awesome. But it's awesome that we can actually talk about it. Dun, dun, dun. I'm super excited to talk to you guys. It'll be fun. I'm very excited to see my co-hosts. Of course, Hector looking magnificent with the hair. I love it. Uh, that background, Straight out of a Hector, cel-shaded cartoon or some shit. Yeah, he, you he looks like, like the real deal cartoon. It's awesome. You're looking good. Uh, Robbie, <laughs> you look great. Robbie, you look happier than usual. I don't know why. Uh, I don't well, know. I don't know either. Going on in your life, no clue. this guy, if, if I could just, if you could take the essence of Beastly Thoughts and squeeze it into a jar, it would be like the Dark Crystal. Remember they're squeezing the essence of the uh, little that mini people and drinking weird. that shit. Oh my god! It, it, oh. it would be another another Dark Crystal. You guys look great, uh, and I'm really uh, looking forward to this this week's episode. Uh, before we get started with some of the news, uh, Mister Not Too Nerdy ENT. Would you please walk us through that backdrop that we see there? I see something uh, uh, on the on the far bottom left of the screen. It looks like the NES robot that came out. Oh years yeah, ago. is so that really got, what that is? We got Rob the robot down there. So that's <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. I got that's actually the one that's like open. I got another one that's sealed. So I got like a sealed NES Rob the robot, the whole thing. Um, but that one's just for display right there. It still works too. So that's a working one as well. Um, I got like Batman, Arkham Knight, like collector's edition. I got Metal Gear Solid Five collector's edition. Um, I got more stuff over there. Different PS3s, PS4s, boxes. God of War. It, edition. it doesn't uh, look like you're longing for any content. It looks like no, you got I got lots of, of Hector's. My goodness, man. Oh my god. That is, you know, <laughs> Amazing, very dude. seldom, and but it's been this way. I've known you for a number of years, Hector. Very seldom have I met someone that when I see their collection, I get envious. Uh, but right now, I'm actually – I have a lot of shit. You know, it's scattered you know, through this office. But the way that you got it set up uh, – walk us through these little cabinets back here. I know I see some uh, NES games. Are those uh, yeah, 64 NES games over there behind yeah, – uh, yeah, underneath? Those are, those are box, like completely box and sealed ones. 64 games. Yeah, so like my, my favorite – obviously, the favorite one is Conquer's Bad Fur Day. That's, that's sealed right there. So like I have like a lot of them that are sealed and never open. So that's – why that's displayed there and then i got more over here the ones that are open um i got other box ones i have all nes on that side um i have a whole nother section that's going up for nes alone because i have 698 nes games like different yeah. ones that's my biggest collection out of all <laughs> nes so uh, that's, uh, you know I, I don't say this very often crazy. to guys but i'm extremely erect right now looking at this <laughs> Oh, I didn't even display the console yet. I got like, something I, large, I something long in my console. pants, Hector. You turned me on. Oh, my goodness, baby. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Don't you that, stop. That, that keep really going, is um, a, a great-looking collection. <laughs> that man. got me excited, dude. Keep it. Just speak. It, it, keep and I see, are those, I see Genesis uh, cartridges. Oh, well, the Genesis cases as well. Yeah. Under the oh, my goodness. I'm, um, I'm, I'm just so heartbroken right now. For, for the people who are watching who don't know, uh, Mr. Not Too Nerdy's background. He uh, he's a very well known YouTuber, and he also has more than one YouTube channel. One of them being Not Too Nerdy Retro, and uh, which he showcases some of the older, more collectible uh, memorabilia that he's collected hey, over the years. Up, and and what he likes to do, uh, it's something I like to do as well, but I haven't had as much time as I'd like. But to go out to like yard sales and go out to estate sales, and he mm-hmm. finds uh, people caught unawares, so to speak. Uh, they have no idea what they have. And uh, he'll say, oh, what, what do you got there? Is that Final Fantasy VII for PlayStation? I'll give you $3 for it. And they say, no, I'll take four. And he'll say, okay, I'll give you four bucks. Uh, and so that's what Not Too Nerdy does. And he has an amazing collection. It's beautiful. This is the first time I've a- actually, in all these years, I've known you for five years. This is the first time I've been able to actually glimpse or gleam a hint. At, I know it's not all you have. But yeah, I, it's, I miss it's, it's, it's a taste. I miss in the console. A little taste I think that's of like what's the most- to come. The it's section beautiful. of consoles, what's I'm missing. I'm gonna very do nice separate very nice. similar to what I saw you have easily at one point. I remember you had separate with like all the consoles separated. Yeah, I um, still I'm do doing it's right there. Like all like that separated, but I have every almost every console that so do I. I mean so I, I have pretty crazy. much all you know, I got a lot of the obscure stuff too. I and some of the things I've had over the years that I've lost 
it's been so many years i don't know how i lost them but like yeah. the sega nomad turbo graphic 16 i don't have anymore uh i had the atari the atari jaguar in 15 games uh in the early 2000s uh and that was when i was with my ex-wife and well we were never married my ex and uh Ooh. i lost that and and it it hurts me to this day, but you know I want some of the obscure stuff, the the Wonder Swan from Japan. I want that. Yeah. I got the Neo Geo Pocket Color. You know I got really little obscure like one offs like the Yobo. Oh uh, of course, I mean I love my Yobo. Yeah. I got virtually every handheld that ever that, that came out because I like the portable aspect of gaming. But all the 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 home consoles as well I own. I own multiple Sega Saturns and Sega Dreamcasts, and you know of course all the Nintendo consoles and. You know, it's great to be able to look around and kind of have a piece of history and everything work. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah and, that's, and Robbie, that's super cool. Yeah. I, I know you're young, Robbie, but as you get older, just wait till you hit 16. Me? Young? Come on. Something's like, you're going to start feeling tingles in really strange places. Robbie. Oh, I felt tingles is, lately. Let me tell you. I don't know. If that's Ooh, true. Especially might, last it, night. It, 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 it might. Oh. <laughs> exciting Anyways, times. Sorry. Excuse exciting me. times. <laughs> it sounds like Robbie is no longer a boy. He's now a man I'm boy. A man. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can show you. He's, he stepped past the man boy. Okay. I won't. So this week we got some really uh, exciting gaming news to bring you guys in our long format of Beastly Thoughts Live. The very first topic is one that uh, some of the hosts here have strong feelings about. We talked about it pre show. I think that Not Too Nerdy uh, probably has the most and probably the most logical things very to say about this particular thing. Well. Yes. The yeah. story is. IGN has come under fire this week after reviewer Philip M- Munich M- what is Mugen, that? I think his name is Mugen? Mugen. Yeah. has plagiarized a review of Dead Cells by YouTube YouTuber Boomstick Boomstick Gaming. The company has since sent out a statement apologizing to both Boomstick Boomstick Gaming and their own audience for the matter. They have since fired the reviewer. I didn't know this. Uh, and posted a redone version of the review. Wow, I didn't know. I, I, I saw the story two days ago, uh, and that's, I think, when it, it really came out that Boomstick had been plagiarized. Uh, I was in the car with Kate, and uh, I was listening to the... Boomstick actually came out first yeah. with, with a video on IGN's review, and he was showing the parallels between his actual words and the words of Philip M- Mewson. And uh, Philip it was Mucus. really... Yeah, mucus, bugger bitch. Um, <laughs> Anyways, keep going. And, and I was really uh, caught off guard by that. You know, it takes a lot of balls to do that. Uh, and it's really not does. like it's not like Boomstick is a small channel. The guy has like what uh, fifty thousand subscribers? Fifteen thousand I mean, something? Fifty? Yeah. Close enough. Well, I know yeah. there's a five in there, but it's a lot, a lot more yeah. than me. A lot of five. And 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 uh, he does a really good job with his reviews. He went really uh, in depth with you know his thoughts and ideas on it. And to have someone at a world a uh, world known worldwide organization like IGN just lazily go to the internet, find someone he thought was obscure enough that he could plagiarize. You know, that's the thing. You go to someone who you think, oh, they only have seven thousand subscribers. No one yeah, no, no one knows. I'll that. never oh, tell. Yeah. You know, that situation. And uh he plagiarized the hell out of his review and hopefully this guy doesn't get hired anywhere else. I'm anxious though to hear what not too nerdy entertainment has to say about this story. All right. So you know just to you know some of what uh, Beastly said. So yes, this guy, you know, was accused of plagiarism for that. Um, and on top of it, he he had no response. You know, while they're investigating, or whatever. Uh, Boomstick pretty much, you know, showed it. Like you could see, it was not only because plagiarism doesn't only have to be word for word. It could be you're stealing people's styles and like the way it flows. Like everything like that could also be considered plagiarism. But he literally had word for word. For what this person used like that's that's enough that's even that's pretty much the dumb way of doing plagiarism so if you're gonna plagiarize something you better do change up right, the words boy. enough do it he changed. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I was i was listening to uh to it on boomstick's channel and he he went you know, you know over his own statement he let you hear it and yeah. then when you heard the statement of uh this reviewer he just changed one word or he added yeah. one word that's why, like, he didn't even do it a smart way. If you're going to do it, you could have summarized what someone else said and listened change to it over your or own, summarize, yeah. Change it to your own like thing. Your own version, like, but no. I've never seen, like, you really don't see that someone do that for uh, IGN, which is going to get so many views, and you realize that one of these people are going to catch you. It is it's probably the dumbest thing I've ever seen, like, to make it that obviously plagiarized. Then he had a nerve, because yesterday what happened was this, right? So before... 
you know, when they're investigating Jason, which is from Kotaku, right? Yeah, Jason, Jason Schreier. Is, he, Jason Schreier, really good. I think he's one of the best people that he always gets to the source. He tries to investigate things, and he's really good. So he's written well, a couple books, too. If you, if you guys um, ever like his content or what he writes, you should go read his books. Like, he does a great job. All right? He went to investigate to see if there's any history of this guy plagiarizing before. He found something that this guy did the same thing with FIFA a while ago. So he did the same exact thing. He took someone else's, before he was on IGN, he plagiarized someone else's work and he posted it. So then he mentions that in the article. And then during the apology yesterday, which this guy, Philip, gave an apology. Quote unquote uh, yesterday. apology. And I didn't hear he the much, apology. Was it sincere? It wasn't. No, he's did, a cuck. It's not sincere. In there was he actually apologizing. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> like, the thing is, like, he was never. He never really apologized throughout the whole thing. It was more like, I'm sorry to the the drama it caused the developers. But he didn't say I actually did it. Like, he was pretty much trying. He never took ownership that he did it. I'm there sorry. I'm never, such a drama queen. Thing. Blah blah blah. I, I've never seen that before that he did that. You know what I mean? Mm. Like well, it, anyone would do that. That, that makes it makes you kind of look at it. If Jason Schreier did this in, in-depth investigation, I don't know much about Schreier. I've yeah. heard the name many he's times in gaming lit. circles. He's an awesome dude. But if, if he's done this investigation and found out that uh, Mucus has actually <laughs> plagiarized before, it makes you wonder how how well IGN is vetting their their employees yeah. when they bring them in. But you know? the thing is this though, like in the video, he then cuts away from apologizing from IGN for stuff like that. And he apologized to the developer. And then he goes into attacking Jason, saying that, oh, Jason said all this stuff there. He doesn't know me. Like, he pretty much is accusing the guy that's actually not plagiarizing, the guy that actually did his own research and wrote his own article. That's the one he tries to, like, put down. I'm looking at this. I'm like, this guy has to be the dumbest person. He just got fired for it. Instead of just owning up, say, yes, I made a mistake, maybe say something like, I was under a lot of pressure. I didn't have time to fully write it. So I looked at someone else's and I got some my own like ideas. I did play the game. I was, you know, something like that. I was waiting for that sort of excuse. He but didn't even admit that he did say, it, like, which is the saddest part, too. He didn't yeah. admit it. And instead, he then um, blamed Jason because people started tweeting at him and attacking Jason him. Jason caused all the drama. Don't look at me. And he said Jason's the one that called all this. It's all Jason's than, fault. Don't look at this. Did, it's all know? Jason's fault. That That's the thing I don't get. Like, <laughs> sometimes you have to realize, like, it, it's not that person's fault. God, you, it's you like heavy rain all over. You're going to yell for, for Jason. Why are you Jason? I think it's disgusting. I think that uh, IGN... Do, do you not, think that he should be allowed to work in the industry ever again? Absolutely no, not. Like, shit, no, after, no. Get no. that bitch boy out of here. No, fuck that man. No. After his apology... After his <laughs> lack of apology, he doesn't deserve to be there. Fuck no. Yeah, I, I, I believe it. that that once you uh, you you cross that precipice of, of uh, trust, uh, once you show uh, your 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 contemporaries that you're willing to do anything, don't trust someone uh, with a small penis. Don't do it. He you just can't. You can't. You can't put a person uh, in that position with that kind of power again, uh, especially no. someone who could uh, diminish. The name of a company and like can damage I, a IGN. brand so heavily, right? Yeah. And like everyone IGN thinks this is IGN is, is, is a company doing this. It's no, it's fairly one person. Too. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Respected. I mean, they might hire him at, at CNN. You know, they do a lot of fake news, yeah. but uh, this guy, you know, it takes a lot of balls to do that and do it the way. Because I feel like I'm intelligent enough that I could plagiarize anything, and no one would ever know. I, I feel like if I read a paragraph, I could say it in ten. Yeah, and it's not ways. that hard to make your own version of something, right? I, like you I mean, spin I it enough. I feel like that. You know, all you have to do is yeah. be able to flip the language and and make it reflect more of your yeah, it ideology. It sounds like your own thing. Yeah, it sounds like yeah, you've I mean, read it. I mean, he said uh, he said Dead Cells is a um, a roguelike Metroidvania. He said everything. It's like let's just cut words like, out like, of this guy's review. No one it, will it, suspect it's a thing. But no I think one. that IGN IGN made the the right call. I'm happy to hear that they did an investigation. They looked into it. Apparently, he wasn't able to uh, justify his review. They had to uh, fire him too. There's no. Now I want to hear them. IGN's, you know, review that they put up, the new one, and see if that the person who. Because do you guys think he even played the game? It doesn't sound like he did. It sounds like he needed every bit of information he could from a Philip, from a or he st- just got like an hour or two into it, and he's like, "Shit, my review is." I don't know if you know? he got if he got that far. Because, uh, you know, he was talking about things that uh, Boomstick had to go through to get to the very end of the game. I mean, all all the unlocks and the Metroidvania aspect, uh, 
the fact that he had to steal another person's language to convey that means it more than likely he didn't convey, didn't see a way to convey it himself. Mm-hmm. It's just you know one of those crazy situations. Good good on IGN for getting rid of you know this guy. He obviously doesn't have very much talent. You know, I've reviewed many games. You guys have reviewed video games before. It doesn't take a lot. It just, you know, you just sit down, you play it. If you don't like it, make sure you convey that in your review. You don't take someone else's work and, and try to click. Yeah. So, Beastie, screw I'm sorry you. if I talked over you too. Apologies. No, no. Not, 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 a problem. Okay. Not, not a problem. It popped up on the I, screen. I'm like, everyone I, could see that. I, I had a magic <laughs> night last night too, Rob. It's fine. Okay, I had so. a fun night, guys. So, yeah, we're having fun. <laughs> just, just, just smile <laughs> with Rob here. Fallout 76's PC version will not be available on Steam and will only be offered via the Bethesda.net game launcher. We have Ooh. to ride over this. This is terrible. That How is can you fun. expect them to do this? <laughs> not releasing it on Steam. Are they out of their minds? Well, well, there there are other there are other platforms to, out there that, that are not as bad as Bethesda. Storm their bad. offices. We have to burn them down. This is not uh, acceptable. We have the PC master race. We will not stand for this. I have a PC, but I'm not a fucking master. I know it's I gotta, a little bit overblown. <laughs> okay, I you know I, I think that you know it's business. Uh, what are some of the other uh, competitors for Steam that the Microsoft Store is one? Uh, Origin, you play. Origin is the one that people yeah. really don't like. I've never heard anything said negative about Bethesda.net. Bethesda is a, a, Bethesda. a pretty, you know, they're a pretty yeah. reputable company. I, I think that they yeah. they have uh, lots of smart people working, probably handling their service and their network. So uh, it might work fine. I guess we got to give it a go. Everything's not Origin. That's what I'm saying. Well, Blizzard's probably, you know, Blizzard's the best. Yeah. Blizzard is, yeah. Well, they've been out there longer than Steam. Yeah. Yeah. I think Blizzard's the best overall. Yeah, Blizzard like, and Steam survival. are generally ones that people like. All the others are yeah. kind of, eh. Like, especially you playing Origin or... Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so, uh, I, I guess, you know, for people who exclusively like Steam, they're going to, if they want to play Fallout 76 on PC, money's money. As long as it works, I really wouldn't care. Of course, uh, <clears throat> other services like Origin and, and Bethesda.net probably don't have the same functionality as, as Steam would. Yeah. That... That might be the issue because a lot of people who play on Steam, you're used to that UI, you're used yeah. to all the, the ways that you can kind of uh, change the game, play mechanic dynamics. If people just like having all their games on one launcher too if they can do that because you can add different games to Steam from different launchers and people like doing that. So this is like, oh, it's another launcher now with the Bethesda thing. Well, the thing is this though. I also think that uh, I, I think when Fallout came out in the first place, like a lot of people had Steam keys. So, like, a lot of people got them cheaper than it really was supposed to be, and I think that's what they're trying to prevent now. But that's just like, no, you're not going to do that crap anymore. We're going to bring you our site. You're going to have to pay full price just like everyone else is. Yeah. I think that's what like, I know. When that came, came I out, that. I paid, like, $35 or so, $30. I didn't pay $60. You know, I was surprised you paid that key. much, man. You I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I was, yeah, I'm I was you get for, like, a third it. of the price. Like, or I was late because the Steam key, like, there's different sites that give you the keys, and, like, I saw some of the sites. By the time I went there, I missed the sale, and like it was still thirty five, thirty six dollars. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. A lot of people didn't pay full price for that game, and that's the way it is. When you have Steam keys, like people from yeah. anywhere around the world will just they'll get a cheaper key, and then next thing you know, the developer and publisher are not getting as much money as they're supposed to originally. Yeah, I mean, so. it's it's a double edged sword, I guess. You know, uh, I use Steam keys. I bought Resident Evil, uh, the HD. Ultimate Edition for PC uh, three days ago. I haven't even it's installed on my Steam, but I haven't played it yet. I found it for four dollars, and I was like, you know, I already have it on PS4 Which and everything. Um, I gotta look at my email. Okay, wait, some, wait, it, some keys uh, resellers are reputable, some Twitch's, aren't. Like that's the thing. Yeah, I don't too. know if it's on Twitch's. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Or release yeah. Yeah. Sites. yeah, yeah. You can't share. <laughs> the <site>. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I, Thanks. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't uh, stream. So thank you, uh, Mister Not Too Nerdy, <laughs> saving Rob the Skull's ass. God, uh, my before, ass before was we get over to the, the next fire story, there. you put me over the roast, man. Jesus. Before we get yeah, to the next little story, have you guys been playing the new? Second weekend beta of uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Four. It's it's no. pretty lit, boys. Okay, it's pretty good. I just when I got home, really good. And, and, and to let you guys know, we didn't mention this at the beginning of the show. Uh, we're late today. We normally go at two o'clock on Saturdays. Uh, I, I was out panhandling t-shirts. I had a package of t- t-shirts to deliver to some lady in, in Peachtree City, and uh, it's a really nice neighborhood. It probably looked like a drug deal. A little package. 
back and forth. So I was a little late, and I appreciate that. But when I got home, uh, I'd already had the uh, beta installed. Mm -hmm. They got a new mode now. It's called Heist, I believe. Yes, it's very CSGO remnant. Very cool. You know, you get the yeah. money, you escape. Cool shit. Yeah, I, I haven't tried it. Oh, because I love TDM. I love uh, Team Deathmatch so much. Uh, but it feels really, really good. The only reason I haven't played it on PC, I, I, I do have a code for the PC, is that when I play on PC, I can't play with my girl. Yeah. So that's the thing. I, you know, I got my roll dog. I mean, Robbie, if you were here, I'd kick Kate out and it'd just be me and you, baby. Ooh, but whoa, Kate, I'm going to go tell but, Kate. <laughs> she's watching. She knows. Okay, Kate. Uh, just so you know but, now, but, PC made it clear. <laughs> yeah, I made it. <laughs> now you heard crystal, it. From, the entire internet's heard it too. So yeah. there's no going back. But, we play, you know, kind of, we do everything together. And so it's been on PS4. And I got to say, you know, I, the initial, the first week, I saw a lot of reviews and I heard a lot of people talking about this game. And, and it didn't seem like, I guess the consensus was it wasn't that great. Yeah. A lot of people have issues. There's some things about the game I don't like. I think that it takes much too long to kill an enemy. Uh, that's And even some uh, enemies can wear armor, making it even harder to kill them. Uh, but overall, I think the game feels fantastic. I, I think it, it it looks great. It's probably the best looking Call of Duty because they don't have a, a single player campaign, so all those assets can be reallocated into the multiplayer assets. Yeah. But I'm liking it so far. Uh, what are you thinking, Robbie? I, I saw you on Twitter. You said that the PC version was like, but it's like butter. Yeah. You know what? First weekend, I have to agree with you, Beastly. Um, especially, I was playing on a standard PS4. I don't know if you guys heard, standard PS4 had frame rate problems. So, especially yeah. one of the maps just ran. We don't like... have standards. We we use pros. Sorry, Robbie. Continue. <laughs> you're so you're so basic, Robbie. Basic, basic, basic bitch. bitch. <laughs> basic bitch. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Look, as a basic bitch, I will tell you what my experiences were. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you can hear it from me first. Uh, yeah, no, basic bitch PS4 basically doesn't run great. Get a pro. <laughs> There's my consensus. There you go. <laughs> Just saw okay. the PS4 Pro. Uh, I, I saw yeah. Digital Foundry talk about it. They said the same thing that it, it had some real trouble hitting right. at 60. Yeah, all serious, all seriousness though. Um, yeah, so it ran kind of rough. Uh, but you know what? At first, honestly, it's weird because I got to tell you, basically, at first playing that game. I'm like, this just feels like Black Ops 3. You know what I mean? Like, it just feels like another Call of Duty game. I'm not that interested in it. I didn't give it enough of a shot, though. This weekend, however, on PC, oh my god. Like, this is a way different Call of Duty game, and I realize it so much. Like, it's just, it's the little things. It's the manual healing, um, the fact that I love that I love stim that, shot. Man. Just the fact that, you know, it kind of keeps the action going, that you can heal yourself, you know, you can stim up, and it's kind of like you have to decide when you want to pop it. Like, it seems like such a small thing, but honestly, it fundamentally changes the game so much. Uh, that longer time to kill... I know you were just saying, BC, you didn't like it very much. Personally, I was on the fence. Now I love it because, uh, again, it kind of changes the game, and it feels like it's more about gun skill, which I personally love. I actually really like that change where I was on the fence at first. And then the fact that, holy shit, a Call of Duty game is well-optimized on PC. What year is it? Like, I was blown away. It's It <laughs> runs so smooth, and it controls so well. I'm like, Call of Duty sucks ballsack on PC usually. <laughs> but no, it's good. I mean, let, me, let me tell you guys my uh, really experience good. with this uh, Call of Duty. Ready? I'm impressed. So uh, last week, remember, we're all supposed to play together. PS4, remember Kinda that? Didn't yeah. So I go, you know, I had three codes. Right. Not one, three different codes. I go to download the game. It started downloading, and all of a sudden, it crashed. I don't know why it crashed. No problem. Dude. Put it back in. And uh, next thing you know, it says it won't download it's saying error so i'm like what the hell so i went to go download the game again Activision. it says code was used it said code was used already what so then i'm like okay so i had another code all my codes for amazon were used so i didn't know who the hell to curse out amazon Activision. for the codes, codes out on the street life? or and playstation for detethering the code you from your account what's going Dude, on what here what the hell happened i'm like so you were never like... able to download it in the first place no i have two percent downloaded <laughs> no on the playstation and, it, and then it's aired out, and that was it. That's why I never got a chance to play with you guys this way. I was, I was playing Warframe the whole time. Dude, that's I was, I was so funny. We had no clue. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's sad. Uh, one, damn. Uh, that really does <laughs> suck. That's one thing I'll say. Sometimes Sony does make those mistakes where you have something on your account, and then all of a sudden it's gone. Yeah. And then you got to call them. You got to wait for two hours to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you for calling Sony. My name is Enrico. How can I help you? Uh, anyway... <laughs> Uh, one great, one great uh, perk. Service. 
that that I see in this game that, that I think they changed up is the different cl- character classes. I forget what they're called in this Call of Duty, but specialists, uh, specialists, 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 specialists. Special. These yes. specialists, their abilities are fucking bad. I, and I'm not young anymore. Robbie knows the names. I've tried the specialist that uh, brings out the pit bull. Putting He's me on awesome. the spotlight here. <laughs> Nomad, uh, I do know them. <laughs> the Nomad, see what I'm saying? There's another one that has like the you can shoot like a tether in like maybe a corridor. Crap, and you neck? can tether. Yeah, no. You can hit on one side of the door and then the other Basically, side of the door. Basically, that's the then, same one, Nomad. <laughs> huh? No. Yeah, it's it is. Nomad, it, that is the okay. dog. That's the same one. Yes, yes. That mm. shit is so awesome. People run through it and explode. It's just, to me, it feels like they've bridged some kind of so crazy fun. gap and, and they've added so many different ways to fuck people up. To me, that's the great part that you can play, you know, run and gun. You can play more defensive. You can set traps on people. You can have these little uh, electric wheelie carts that ride so around the map based. and zap people. I love that. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's really, it's really a lot of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Now, do you guys think? Because uh, remember, keep in mind, as someone that has not played it, right? I did see some footage on it. Do you guys think? Because you were saying before, basically, that it's it's it takes a lot longer to kill someone than did before, right? That's yeah. what they change. It's, yeah, it's time harder. Way to longer. Kill Health time is to kill is as well. Which do you really think that change was made just because of the game mode that it's coming out? Is Black-o, that is that why the change was made? The it, battle royale. You think more that's than likely, likely yeah. Yeah, I, and I mean, it it works well when you when you consider the fact that you can heal yourself, uh, and and it's a longer time to kill. It gives you an opportunity to get around a corner and heal yourself, mm-hmm. which is something that I just did before we went live. Uh, I was in a gunfight. I killed two or three guys, and I started getting shot from the back, and I jumped through a hall. Like, as I jumped in midair, I was already stem shotting myself. That felt really slick, and I'm like, oh, I could really get used to that in a pinch. I love You know, you got people shooting at you. Out, yeah. you. You see your health going down. You back up around the corner, heal yourself, send out a sentry or something to go around the corner for you. <clears> it, <throat> it feels like the true – to me, the Black Ops series has always been the best Call of Dutys to me. Yeah, Black Ops Two was the first 100%. one that st- it stole my heart, and and Black Ops Three was okay. I mean, I, it felt very similar to me. The little wall jumping and stuff was okay. I, I, I didn't need it, but this one right here feels like the real evolution of what Black Ops Two was trying to do, and the natural progression of the way that game was created and crafted. It looks great to me. It runs really smooth. I probably end up getting on PC too, uh, and it'll be the first yeah. time I'll buy a Call of Duty on a PC. Yeah, the fact Never that the PC been. port is so good, like I'm absolutely buying this on PC. When I saw how well the beta runs, like I was shocked. Like just to tell you guys, I didn't expect anything mm. out of this. You know, like Cod World War Two was kind of on PC. I'm like, okay, we'll see how they do. I'm blown away. Like they did a really good job, and like it's just so much fun. Like I'm like, holy shit. Like I Black Ops Three was kind of eh for me too. You know what I mean? Basically, I thought the beta was really fun in that game, but I got kind of bored of it. Um, but this game, like I know people are mixed on the changes, but I personally love that this is such like a different feeling Call of Duty while feeling kind of the same you know what i mean like i love them just changing things up but it's still being the same core game like i'm really impressed by it personally i actually really think this game could be something i play for a while like i i'm i'm pretty well, happy about it well that's one thing i'll say right we're, we're really getting into a place in, in in the modern era of gaming where it, either you've got to put it all in in one game or come to the realization that nothing lasts forever yeah yeah i mean uh it's a sad thing it's like to me the best multiplayer game of all time all time nothing better is The Last of Us. It's crazy. I haven't played it in so long because I've been playing Destiny. I didn't play Destiny at all this week. Kate's father and uncle came to town, treated us, took us out. You know, we went, I didn't know where I lived. They, they knew more about my city than I did, going to see all these fancy places and Centennial Park and eating $300 dinners and shit. Ooh. I wish I wish they'd come back. But um, for me, a game, like I heard you say, you could probably play this for a long time. No, you're not. You're a streamer, and I know what you do. You're, as soon as something else comes the fuck out, yeah. Call I've been Duty's completely fine, called out. All right. No, uh, you're not. <laughs> Call of Duty's great, uh, but <laughs> I, I'm going to play this because this looks it looks awesome and it's new and I'm going to try it out. And and it's really hard to, you know what I'm saying, Hector? It's yeah. hard to dedicate yourself to that. It's like back in the 80s and 90s, you literally had three games that were on your radar. Now, throughout the year, there's seven uh, game conferences that come oh, out throughout the year. There's so many games I want to play. You're totally you, right. You got expectations that. throughout the entire year. Uh, you know, what happens when that, you know, when Detroit Become Human comes out or not, yeah, Detroit Become Human or uh, a God of War just out of the blue or Call of Duty or uh, the Awaken uh, DLC. Mm-hmm. Anything that just happens, it'll just catch you off guard mm-hmm. and take you away from something. So I'll mm-hmm. say this, in all honesty, I really like this Call of Duty. To me, it feels like a, a, a true return to form. Nobody's jumping and strafing back yeah, and forth. I like I love it too, that. a lot. I'm pretty the gunplay like feels great. It feels very, very, very responsive. But I'm going to play it as long as I can. 
because uh, another strange thing that I'm really falling into now that I, you know, it's, it's never happened before. I'm going to sleep with another person in my bed every night. She's called the Nintendo Switch, and and she's, you know, when Kate rolls over, <laughs> she rolls oh my over. God. over. I didn't know where that way. was going. <laughs> uh, and, and the Switch has really been, you know, consuming a lot of my time. And it's like now, whenever a multiplat's coming out, I'm really thinking I want it on like Dead Cells. I want it on the Switch. You know, even though we could game share, I like having that portability and the ability to play and take something. You know, I'm playing Paladins on my Switch. So, I mean, that's another huge, huge distraction from great games. And I hope I can get down with Call of Duty. I'm sorry this took so long. It was a great little segment we talked about. Well, Beastly, I have to agree with you. Uncharted 2 multiplayer is the best uh, multiplayer ever played. I, yeah, I like we got that. a little, a a little language on, barrier here. Two, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure that's what you thought I said, but I'm sure, it, it, you know, languages are like potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Yeah. It's fine. Uncharted yeah, 2, yeah. Uncharted low blow 2. There. Yeah, yeah, the last one, the last one. Hey, yeah. All right. The beta, we just talked about this game. The beta for Fallout 76 will begin sometime in October. It will be the full game and pro- – wait. It will be the full game, and progress will carry over to the final release. Apparently, yeah. The beta will be the full game? Yeah, apparently, like, the entire game. It, it is so the how, entire game. So you could complete the game in the beta form? It's, I feel like they probably would restrict sure. that, but I have no clue. Yeah, yeah, no, they just said it's the full game in what context? We don't really know, but apparently, like, the majority of it's there. Like, basically mm-hmm. the whole thing. That's going to help her download it early, though, because then they're going to try to unlock it. I'm kind of curious if someone's going to hack it and find a way to unlock it, though, before. I mean, but even with that, this is basically just early access. This isn't even a beta, honestly, to me. Like, this just sounds like early access. Yeah. Is, is the uh, the beta only going to be available? Is this a PC beta or is it a console no, it's beta as well? And it's on Xbox One as well first. It comes out first on there. Oh, man, that means I'm not going to get but it on Xbox, Xbox One. Xbox One first as in, like, a couple days, though, right? Like, oh, you know, yeah. I think it's like five days or something. Or no, it's EA. But like, what does uh, what did Bethesda do? Like, what do they do? How early did they release it on Xbox One? Well, we don't know. They, it's just gonna be like a day or two early, probably. All right. Yeah, I don't know why Bethesda. You know, some people are crazy. I don't know why they chose uh, Microsoft this console generation. Anyway, dumb idea. My Xbox is exclusively for Netflix and for Game Pass. And other than that, it just sits there and looks like a VCR. Yeah, literally mine too. And maybe Twitch and stuff too, or YouTube. That's it. Very, very true. That's it. You know, it's all I use it for. And it's great for those things. I'm telling you, Uh, the controller lasts It's a great VCR box. (laughs) You can watch two Netflix movies and the battery power is still the exact same. No, it's funny. Like, everyone hated the backlash of the Xbox One when it was announced as this, you know, like streaming box and uh, multimedia system and for sports and call and TV. That's what I use it for. That's it. That's it now. It's right, funny how so it what, Yeah, it's good. What system are you guys getting it for? Fallout PC? 76. PC? Yeah. It starts with a P. doesn't end with a C. PS4. <laughs> this podcast uh, over. You know, I, I love my PC. And, and, you know, some games I'll probably end up doing it. Like, I think I'm going to get PC Black Ops 4 to play with you guys. the power of Christ. But, but PC, Kate- you better obey. <laughs> <laughs> that's some hard work. shit you better oh, fucking obey I'm gonna have the to PC master one. race we're coming to get you right, buy it on PC yeah but you know like I told you guys I'll my, strike my you gaming, down my 24-7 Beastly. gamer buddy is right here I'll strike you down you guess I'm going to hell Robbie buy it on PC I'll see you there <laughs> with a big PlayStation the power of on. Christ compels you to buy it on PC <laughs> alright so <laughs> the next uh, in fact Robbie I want you to do the next story Nvidia. Shit, I don't even know where yeah. we are. Oh, oh, the uh, graphics card one. Let me. Find yeah, because you're, you're the here. power of Christ compels you to, to do this story. <laughs> power of Christ compels me to read this story for all you beautiful people. Anyway. Yes. Praise Nvidia God. has patented new GPU technology, suggesting new generation graphics cards could be on the way very soon, which are long overdue. Uh, these include Quadro RTX. So Quadro is more of like. Um, graphics cards, a line of graphics cards that aren't used for gaming. It's more for performance things like like video editing and stuff like that, like heavy editing. Uh, GeForce RTX, which would be their gaming line, and NVIDIA GPU Cloud. So something to do with the cloud. Oh, that sounds like Xbox. Crackdown 3 integration. I mean, In- the- NVIDIA integration. Shield integration. Oh. Do you have the Shield? No. <laughs> All right, hey. <laughs> I, I, I hear it's really awesome. supposed to be a collector. It's actually it, really it awesome. works. It works great though, but I just didn't find a need for it because they 
it's like the only thing that they try to sell with is, oh, here here goes like Android games, or you could just stream your games that's like ten feet away from you, right there. Like I'm like, uh, so it's like a Steam key. It, it, no, it's, it's a device. It it's, works. It's a device, yeah. I know, but you have to use it in close uh, proximity to your PC. Well, that's where it works the best. Well, like lag free, that's where it works the best. And like to me, it just uh, I don't feel seeing the need for it because that's like what the Wii U did, right? And that was a successful. You have to be certain distance away from the Wii U, and oh, I could turn off the TV and still play it here. It really doesn't work for me, you know, especially playing a PC game handheld that doesn't work. So, I mean, PC has definitely taken over, but it's like it hasn't taken over for me yet. If you guys could only have one, one gaming device. Would it be your PCs at this point? Yes. I'd have to give up my PC. It'd have to be well, a PlayStation. Well, you're saying gaming device. Like, the PC is sort of cheating because then I have more than one device, right? I could, you, I could you go could get a laptop. I could do everything. Or you well, could well, do whatever well, I want. Let's streamline the, the, the categories. Only Steam. Steam versus consoles. Steam. Steam. That's because Steam will have more sales. I could get more games. It, it stores everything for Cheaper me on top of it. Steam sales. Um, awesome games. <laughs> I mean, that's really six, cool. performance. Pretty much it. Like, it's pretty lit. Right. Now, the next bit of news is a game that I've never played. And uh, let me hear about it in the comments because I know it, it's Blasphemy, sac- I can't believe it's this. sacrilege for me to even admit this. But oh. Blizzard Entertainment has multiple Diablo projects in the works according to the company. One of these is likely Diablo 4. And I've not played one. Not one. It's good. Not two. Diablo. Not three. Diablo is a really good series. Diablo three four. was is great. That four after, fingers. That's four. Okay. After yeah, four four months, it was uh, <laughs> you're available to play it after four months because you know uh, you kept getting a freaking stupid error code and you couldn't sign in to Diablo three. <clears> Blizzard. <throat> on PC. I, on PC, I was beyond pissed off because you're talking about like. I'm over there again at Erica. Tell me why people I know, I had some friends that got the bootleg version that they hacked the game. They were playing that on day one. Meanwhile, the people that actually paid for the game <laughs> were play. locked out of the game. I'm like, that's how you, you get what you pay for. That's how you knew people that stole the game because they were the ones playing it. Everyone else was locked out of it. So you're like, okay, there seems like there's more people locked out. Those are the people that paid. The people that are in or they hacked it. I mean, would they change this style of game, you think, at any time in the future? I know it's a, a, a kind of a top-down type of experience. I remember I used to play a game years ago on PlayStation called Champions of Norath. Uh, and it's a top-down uh, dungeon crawler with tons of loot. And I think that Diablo is a similar style of game where you have characters running around a map together, like Gauntlet style. It- well, here's the thing, right? Diablo was always like a point-and-click game on a mouse. You're pointing and you're clicking to do actions and like you're doing quick bonds on the keyboard. It seemed like they already changed the gameplay once it came to consoles because now it's switched up the way it plays. You know, the, your, the way your motion is and the buttons are mapped to certain things, it actually switched up the way the game so plays So it's more anyway. like an adventure game. Yeah, it's you're a lot actually different hitting you hold, every... don't you, Didn't you yeah. just hold the analog stick to move and hold X or something? Yeah, so yeah. You're, you're, the way you're moving was a lot different. That's like different. champions. And it wasn't like that a mouse. You're clicking on a spot to move the character, and then you're doing other actions. Like that's, Oh, yeah. So it, it changed the game already. So like, um, I think they're just going to follow that because it worked well in Diablo 3 like when they did on consoles. A lot of people actually pretty much bought it. More people than they probably thought bought it. It was actually pretty decent. It switched it up on Diablo, you know, on PS4 and stuff like I, that. I, over the years, uh, did you, first of all, did you guys play uh, Part 3 of Diablo at all? Yes, played a lot yeah. of Diablo 3. Really great I've game. never played it, and I think that going back before Diablo 3 would be kind of a pointless gesture at this point, but is it too late to, to try Diablo 3 and, and you think I'd still like it, enjoy it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it still oh, holds okay. up really well. As a group, though, I think... I think like, I'm, something me and Kate can play to together. Game. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Two people will be good. Yeah, you're doing that, and like you don't really need to go back to the other two. You're not, you're not gonna fall in love with the storyline. I know people try to, but it's not really one of those things, in my opinion. Um, if you do, you could go back to Diablo two because I like that one a lot. What I think was that? That's that was a best. PC only. Yeah, yeah, like that right there was also the best. <clears throat> I personally think that was the best uh, Diablo's Diablo two. Oh wow! Um, oh yeah. Yeah. 
I could probably get that super cheap on Steam. So I want to look into that. Oh, yeah. You can, well, you could probably get the bundle, all three of them cheap. So if you look into that, especially okay. now that this one's coming out, they'll probably just say, here's like the whole bundle, play these first, and they'll be cheaper. Ooh. So. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely look after we get done with the show. Uh, this is exciting news for me because of the very last sentence of this news. Doom Eternal will be released sometimes in 2019, and the first gameplay has debuted this week during QuakeCon. The game will be released on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch at the same time. Sounds like a group party to me. Uh, oh, man. This is exciting. This is really exciting. I haven't even seen the gameplay footage yet. Oh it. my it's god, good. it looks so sick! The animations so are fucking great. Cool. The graphics look good. Like, but you can tell they're only showing PC versions from what I can tell. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. But like, I see people play it. I don't know if it's a game. Like, How I saw can you one up the original, though? How can you even one up the new movement they, and cool stuff? Yeah. The animations, the, gra- the gore, like, they really went all out to certain things. I saw them, like, one move. Oh, my they Switch. Ripped, they ripped Ooh. someone's heart out. They shoved it in the guy's mouth and then closed his mouth. Like, so he ate his own heart. Like, it was like the animations were just like insane. Like, yeah, just, it, it just was taking crazy. Doom 1 into, and just make, like putting it to an 11, basically. Yeah, yeah uh, it, th- that's a game. Now, there are certain games I have on PC. As a matter of fact, it was Doom was bought for me by my good friend Gary Diaz from the Revolver Live, rest in peace, uh, podcast. Mm. And yep. that was one of the first. It, it was kind of like a, a gift, a graduation gift, as he would call it, for me actually moving over to the PC. I bought this PC. He said, Beastly, I want to get you something special. I played it. Mine completely blown because I played it on PS4, and I thought that on PS4 it was the greatest mm-hmm. first-person shooter I'd ever played on a console. Mm-hmm. I don't recall ever to this day anything feeling as smooth or as fast as Doom felt for me playing it on my PS4 Pro. It just blew my mind. But when I played it on my PC – like playing at plus 100 frames per second everything super fast and fl- oh my god so yeah that's definitely i gotta see that as soon as we're done with the show and and that'll be another game i definitely yeah. buy on on the pc i'm excited about hell that. yeah yeah that's gonna be amazing and the fact that like the shotgun has like the grappling chain now too like beastly the shotgun is like a chain that you can grapple onto someone like grapple around the map and like smack into them like it's really cool like the, and there's like a new dodge mechanic like they've just they've taken and just added elements like it's really cool and just some of the new enemies look so sick, too. Like, it's so fucking cool. <laughs> it is so cool. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see it. All right, so this is a, <laughs> kind of funny news. What started out as a bit of a, a meme has now become a real thing. Developer Pub Corp has started a new effort called, quote, Fix PUBG, end quote, in an effort to address player feedback on the game's ongoing issues, such as netcode, latency, and in-game performance. Seems like this should have been maybe in the beta. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. early access for a reason, and then uh, 1.0, but the game's not really 1.0, and now we're fixing PUBG again. Uh, let me just say this, yeah. okay? PUBG Here. made so much money, you know, I bought it twice, I had to buy it for me and her, and, you know, played online and really enjoyed it. Bought it, bought it three times, bought it, I got it on my Xbox One as well, I don't know why I did that, but uh, all the money that Pub Corp made off this game, there's no fucking reason this game should be running as bad as it uh, as it does. Yeah. There's only two maps. There's no reason ever. Well, they, like that, what you're saying, they, you, they made like a lot of money. I don't think they made as much as they should have because they weren't doing like in-game like things of purchasing game yeah. and stuff like that. They were not monetizing the game. They're all they're doing, like you said, obviously it was people were buying it. Like you say, you buy it twice. People were buying the game. Well, and it's time. early access, and then that's it. So yeah. like, but you're right though. Like what you just said, like there's no reason they shouldn't have spent. They should have spent that money to do more things, but they also should have gave up a creative ways. That money should have went into R and D. That 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 money should have went into quality. That money should have went into new talent. Uh, the game is just it had so many hiccups. Of course, now it's much better than it was initially. Oh yeah, it's uh, I, haven't, I haven't played PUBG on my PC in probably two months. So it's been a while. It probably runs much better now than it did the last time I played it. Yeah. It, but, I mean, uh, it definitely is getting how better. How old is PUBG? That's the question, right? It's Ye- what? A uh, year and almost, a half. About. Yeah, I would say almost two years. And after all that time and probably well over thir- – I know it sold over 30 million copies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if, if you equate – if you look at that the, the financial gain from that kind of sale, there's no reason. Oh, know? they've got a hand over fist money. Like they can yeah. – they, uh, they made a lot of money. So, I mean – 
<laughs> I guess fix PUBG. It, it might be a little late, you know, now that Fortnite's out there and nobody really. I mean, Fortnite's a. It runs like butter. Yeah. It plays on your iPhone. You know, it plays on Android. It, it's it's just Samsung. a real, yeah, Samsung Galaxy S9, S9 Plus, heck, always trying to outdo me. But yeah, yeah uh, for me, it's like um, once you once you go toward Fortnite, it's kind of hard to look back and, and see PUBG in the same light because you're like, okay, it's a different gra- graphical aesthetic. The games look different, of course, but one runs so smooth and it's so fun. It's so tactical. They both have that tactical aspect to it, but the building and everything, it just makes, to me, makes PUBG look a little dated. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the funny thing is this, right? In the beginning, people were like pretty much making fun of Fortnite because Fortnite went with the cartoon version characters, right? They went with the cartoon graphics. And then you have uh, PUBG that's going more for realism as much as they could and as detailed as possible. And then you see which one ran smoother the whole time and which one kept adding different contexts. And since they were playing off like the joke characters, they got all these like emotes, all these different things you could do with them, their dance moves and all. It became more of a fun environment rather than taking it too seriously. It didn't take itself too seriously. And I think that's what made everyone go towards that way. Not only did you have the gameplay that added all these other elements, you had the way it looked. It was yeah. more fun. It was like it was more upbeat and fast paced. As mm-hmm. opposed to PUBG is slower. And PUBG never found the way to do it. They didn't add anything to the game. They weren't fixing things. Like people kept saying, there's errors here. There's buggy things where you'll just show up somewhere. You'll go through a wall. You're dead. Like, And don't don't even talk about the Xbox version. The Xbox One version is a joke. How bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Yeah. Like, I feel bad for Xbox that, that owners, dude. That is horrible. You know? yeah. And like for them to like advertise as one of their best games, uh, Xbox, and then it comes out, it's, it was horrible. You know, so yeah. it that's the reason why. So this fixed PUBG, I think it's too late, piece. I honestly think I, that's what, that's kind of what I'm late. saying. It seems like a, a, a kind of a pointless gesture at this yeah. point because PUBG, while it's still very popular, I don't think it'll ever reach the popularity of Fortnite. Fortnite just kind of came and snatched the rug from under them. I knew it was yeah. over when I saw my 16 year old doing that stupid shoestring dance <laughs> in, my, in my living room. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. So he's like, I'm, PUBG's height that. of popularity. You're too is old to know about this at this point. I feel like. I yeah. I'm curious about you guys' thoughts on this next article. Capcom says it prefers critical reception to sales when it comes to each of its big game releases, says Capcom Europe's COO. Uh, critical reception is more important than sales. I think it can be. Uh, I, I think initially, especially if you, if you have a business model, sales matters more. Yeah. But I think critical reception can have a prolonged effect. It can create a tail and change things over time. Oh god! What do you guys think? Especially with what things do you guys like, think is more important? Oh, I mean, honestly, hey, go ahead. What are you saying, Robert? Oh, I was just gonna say, I think goodwill is a big thing. A uh, big thing that I know. People I, yeah, I used to buy my work clothes from there. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, I lost my train of thought. You guys can't do this. Remember, I, I had. A, a he said good. Night. He said, yeah, he had some brownies last he said night. Goodwill. I, you're not even kidding. I did have a brownie last night. <laughs> so <laughs> sounds like you have more than one. You know? <laughs> okay. I can't believe it. Oh. Okay. Go ahead, Robbie. <laughs> Got to compose myself. <laughs> Whew, okay. Uh, <laughs> we love Shut you, up, guys. We love you, baby. <laughs> Critical okay. reception over sales. No, What's so more here, here's the thing. Um, fuck, I totally forgot what I was saying now. What do you think is more important? I, I'll jump in first, Robbie. You can go. You can yeah. go look, look at Robbie. One eye says now. The other one says loading. To be, to be <laughs> honest, for Capcom's full, full of shit. All right? I'm telling you right now. They're just saying that because controlling. I Street, think so. Street Fighter V didn't sell too well. You know what I mean? Like They had games that didn't sell as well as they thought it was going to sell. And they're like, well, the quick initially Street Fighter Five sold really phenomenally well by now. In the beginning, but like yeah. now, the sudden people were like, forgot about. It. They bought it and they didn't play it as much as they were supposed to. People started picking up because remember, they didn't have to make characters in the beginning. They didn't do certain things, so it's they had no arcade how, mode. They had no story mode, they, uh, like, and yeah, it was it was a shell of a game. They tried to get it out for the Capcom Cup. That's why they they released it. Yeah, I remember. And that. I wish you had that game, Hex, so I could embarrass you in that. Well, I have Street Fighter Five. What are you kidding me? Whoop your and ass! I, and but here's the thing. Cr- cr- yeah, I do. And I also have a PC Woo. version. Which one are you down for? Cause PC don't lag. I'll kick your ass oh, you faster. Don't which one? You always doing on controller. You always doing on controller. Yo, and also critical reception to sales, right? Like 
they also say that, which is ironic because they then come out with things that like are not, you know, good for the consumer, which is just like, it's just funny. Like we just mentioned, Street Fighter V came out with all these lack of characters. Oh, we're going to gradually give it to you. They didn't charge you. It's free upgrades of free characters, but they kept like waiting to release it. It took forever and they released a game that wasn't even completed in the beginning. And it's just funny because like they're like, well, we, we care about critical reception. Really? You do? When? Starting when they wrote this article? Like, well, like you got, yeah, you we got, got, very real much quick care though, about right? the quality of our products. We don't care about making money. That's not what a business is about. Yeah, right, Capcom. Come on. Well, well, well it's Capcom Europe, COO. It's not Capcom of, of Japan. Uh, yeah. I'll say that. And, and, and when Street Fighter sure. came out, it didn't get critical reception and it didn't get good sales. So they can't be talking about every ubiquity it's not all their 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 properties but like uh monster hunter monster hunter has great critical reception and sales and i think that the, the the critical reception if you were to ask me i heard so much word of mouth about it before i bought it i was very late oh, to yeah. buying that game and and even look at the pc version i've heard both of you guys over the last few weeks before launch talk oh it's coming to pc i can't wait and, and so i think that the reception of the game did lead to it do it selling over eight million copies worldwide because i've known about you guys have known about monster hunter for years mm -hmm. but when something comes out and it yeah. resonates with an audience that audience is going to share it with their friends if you find something great that you can share that won't take away from you you're going to tell everybody you can about 100%. it Word and, of mouth and so is a big that's thing. what i think that that's kind of the critical reception it doesn't have to be reviewers or paid reviewers yeah. but i think if the audience really likes something they're going to share it and that kind of that's what i mean it creates a tale yeah. You know that everybody is really excited about. I think uh, the PC version is already the number one selling PC game already this year. Uh, I saw it on the news the day before yesterday. Oh damn! So it's like, yeah, the Monster Hunter on PC just sold like phenomenally well, and I think a lot of that has to do with the reception of the game, and it creates that tell, and I think it's going to do even better. Of course, now you know Monster Hunter's here to stay. It's going to be gone for a long time because of the excitement. Yeah, boy. Well, basically, you said uh, Monster Hunter. I completely agree with you. But, like, is that when they started to, to feel this way because of Monster Hunter and his success? Because before that, I, can, I can't even name a Capcom game that was, like, everyone had critical reception for it beforehand. And, it, it, it like, it also had everything included. And, like, there was people that are still happy with it after his release. Because, like, yes, there's games that are good. Resident Evil Seven, but like, was that clearly acclaimed beforehand? Yes. There really beforehand, people were like, "Oh, we're trying to see what happened." They changed the way it looks and everything. It took people a while to get used to that. Well, a game can only a game can only become critically acclaimed after it's released. I'm saying yeah. after after it was released, word of mouth for Resident Evil Seven was outstanding. People really enjoyed that game, but that mm. didn't lead that didn't lead to the game doing phenomenal sales. Yeah, Resident, Resident Evil, Evil 6 sold Resident better. Evil Six sold yeah. better than Resident Evil Seven. I'm trying to think, but so the like, critical the critical reception for Seven was much higher than Resident Evil Six. Exactly. I just think I think it was kind of um, a, a timing issue with that game. But everybody who played Resident Evil Seven and, and it's across even on Xbox One, they don't have a VR. I played it in VR, changed my life. I think VR, VR is better for that game. Oh honest. my god. Oh, that makes did it you night play and that day. In VR? Yes, that is night and day. Like that, like to me, I can't play it in any any other scary way. Scary experience. Like once you play that, that that's what I meant. Like that right there was the best VR game the PlayStation has. Like that. I think, right it's, there, I think it, it, it's probably a, a contender for the best VR game ever. I mean, yeah. very seldom do you have. And now we're going down this rabbit hole. Very seldom <laughs> do you see a game like Resident Evil that's really a full fledged game that can take you twenty hours to complete. That looks great in VR. It's on PlayStation. And you can play through the ent in the entire experience in VR. Most VR games that look great are maybe four or five or six hour experiences, and that's, mm -hmm. you know, on the long term. That's on the long end. So for me, it 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 kind of scratched both itches for people who are traditional RPG. I mean, Resident Evil fans, uh, you can play it in you know regular first person mode on a on a HD TV, and it'll take you twenty hours. Yeah. Uh, you can play it in VR, and they don't take any of the game away. You just immersed in it and it'll still take you 20 hours. I just don't think there's been many other VR experiences quite like it. But mm -hmm. the the critical reception is what we're talking about here. The critical reception for Resident Evil 7 was outstanding, and I think it does matter in the long term because you know, you can't make a good game bad. No matter how long it takes, it's going to always be good. People who've never played the game, they're going to say, hey, is this game good? It could be a year from now. It could be five years from now. 
people are going to say, oh, man, that's great. You can't make a good game turn bad. But bad games, you know, they'll never turn good. They're always going to be shit. Eventually, yeah. critical reception has to lead to sales, though. That's why Monster Hunter worked out. But, like, if they keep doing it where it's not doing great sales, but, it's, you know, everyone loves it. Like, it doesn't mean anything unless you're making the money. They can't, they can't last Capcom like that. You know I mean? They're going to have to... They're gonna have to do both. Like Especially because Capcom a, in recent years has been like financially struggling. Like they need yeah. critical this hits. A, well, just sales you know, wise. This is, not, yeah. this is a company just saying it to to get back on the to make everyone. Believe, They're trying like, to make oh, their goodwill we're, we're, with customers yeah. better. Is what it is because it that's will lead it. to sales though, which is the right thing to do. Yeah. So that's what they're supposed to do. But like, I still think like. I don't know. I, I think that they're they're just focused on they're trying to make the best game they can, but they have to say stuff like this because it makes people like, okay, they really care about us. Like, it's like yeah, they, I want it's like, them to Hey, care don't look over here at our games. sales numbers, but our critical reception was amazing. Yeah. Pay attention to this. And like for investors so, too, like it probably helped like reassures them. I bet it's yeah. a big part of that too. Well, I mean, hopefully it equals like this. Monster Hunter is a good sign though, because it is both pieces, like you said. I hopefully games follow suit like that for Capcom. Could they do stuff like that, then they're going to be in good hands. Like, I really think they'll they'll get better and better because they have big name games. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing. They have the big name games and they, they start... They do. I mean, I mean the thing is, some of them, you know, I'm, I'm looking right now. Some of these games are, are good. Some of them not so much. The Dead Rising franchise to me, you know, it's kind of falling off. Marvel versus Capcom is kind of a niche thing. Right. Resident mm-hmm. Evil is Resident Evil. Street Fighter, of course, is always going to do well. And Monster Hunter. You see Devil May Cry. Mega Man. Mega uh, Man. The dream is dead, my friend. The dream is Mega dead. Man. Oh, Mega Man's Hector. coming out soon, man. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, Mega Man's coming out, but it's 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 um Mega it's, Man. Isn't it Mega doesn't Man have, like it doesn't a have the magic. fire nowadays? No. No, Mega uh, Man's coming out, like a brand new game coming out. Yeah, but, but it has it has nothing to do with the, the original creator, and I guess we'll have to see. That's like saying there's a new uh, Metal Gear coming out. It, it doesn't resonate for me because it doesn't have Kojima. Yeah. Kojima. Original <sighs> creator. There's no good original creator song. has this opportunity. He didn't do too well either with yeah, this game. Yeah, Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah, what you're you right. talking about? It fucking sucked. <laughs> it was a good idea, but I backed that game. It too. was me- it, it was Mega Man with a new outfit and a smaller penis, and it just didn't. Yeah, I heard that game just sucked. <laughs> big donkey but, nuts, but that's what I'm saying. Mega Man, Mega Man yeah. might shock people. I think it might be good though. I mean, I love Mega Man, and the thing is, you know, I don't like the old 8-bit quite as much. I got the collections, but they're so brutally hard. It's like playing uh dark souls before you knew what dark souls was and so mm. i'll get halfway down to the first stage and then i'll look over at kate and she's smiling at me and then i'll say put in fucking Mega man, man when i played dark souls for the first time <laughs> i discovered a lot about myself as a man oh really yeah yeah <laughs> this is, um, that was dark so- look dark souls, dark Demon souls, souls changed souls. my uh adolescence took Good. away something very strong. <laughs> Man, here. that game bent Robbie over his own fucking gamer chair. <laughs> Give it to me, boy. I, like, I felt something biting down there. Yeah, I'm sure. Boy. Oh, you got, you, told you, you it, it took it away now? from me. Yeah. Beastly, Beastly's crazy. Boy. Boy. <laughs> see. Boy. <laughs> Shut up, boy. Uh, like for me, boy. Dark Souls and Demon Souls. <laughs> Dark Souls and Demon Souls. Uh, they were just too brutally hard for me. I wasn't ready for it. I didn't understand. Those it's games like, made me I, hard. No for doubt. me, I, I was late to them being on time. Like sometimes a game is before its time. I think those games were on time. I was just late to understanding what they were. The game that opened up that door for me and changed it and made me realize exactly what these games were was Bloodborne. When I played Bloodborne, it, was, it wasn't as brutally hard as the others. At least that's what I've heard. Uh, but it was hard, much harder than anything I'd played. And I braved that storm, and, and at the end, I felt like I was on top of a mountain of death, and I was the fucking Bloodborne, man. Bloodborne, Dark Souls, all great games. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, that that was my, I guess, original uh, Mega Man type of experience. You know, that, they are Blood... difficult games, but they sure do make me hard afterwards. They're good games. They're good games. Wait, what did I just say? Uh, great, brown, <laughs> great, great brownies. What did, hold on, what did I say? So they make me hard? No, 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 they're good games. They're hard, but they don't... Well, okay, maybe they do make me hard. I don't know. Bethesda software. I don't know anymore. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> we had to, a lot of Bethesda news in here. Maybe I'll go. I'll play uh, Skyrim on my Switch. Bethesda Softworks has now opened a fourth office in Dallas, Texas, under the Bethesda Game Studios name. The studio will assist development for both Starfield, the game that we only know the name of, Ooh. and... Elder Scrolls Blades. That's the little portable game, right? Isn't mm-hmm. that the... Elder Scrolls Mobile. 
that's super not we exciting. We all said Skyrim was a meme when it was going to come to mobile someday. Well, they just made it well, well, But but this this information is like saying the PlayStation Five will exist one day, and everybody go. <gasps> It's like them announcing Elder Scrolls Six early in Starfield. It's like, hey, these games are real. Okay, we'll we'll see you one day. Well, I mean, Starfield, we have no reason, literally, other than knowing that Bethesda is behind it, to be excited. Oh, uh, it's been excited. It's it seems that way. Yes. Uh, it it seems like to me that if you want your audience to be or your your support base to be excited about something, you got to show them something. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like a, a beautiful woman. She's completely butt naked. You know, you already know everything you got, but you want if you want to get excited, hey, show me your toe. Ooh. You know, move your dress over. Ooh, I can see the foot. There's something there's something else coming. But if you just say oh, Starfield. Boy, oh boy, gotta... Beasley, you were lewd today. <laughs> and <laughs> and rude, dude. Um, <laughs> but but oh. Elder Scrolls Blades, I have literally zero uh enthusiasm or excitement behind that. You know, I, I think that a lot of people enjoy playing mobile games. I'm just not one of them. I don't know if you guys are, but it's like if if they release Mortal Kombat 2 on mobiles, I, which they did actually, I would not be excited about it. It's, it's just a mobile platform. And, you know, if I have my phone, which I do all the time, and I have an option to either watch YouTube or watch a stream or watch Netflix or pretend to play a game on the screen by sliding my fingers mm-hmm, around, mm-hmm. it's always mm-hmm. going to be the former. It always is. That's why I take my Switch to work, yeah. because it's an actual, real, tangible console. But, yeah. I mean, way to go, Bethesda. You're, you're saying something, and we hear you, I guess. I want Well done, Gwent. Bethesda. Well done. Well I want, done. I want, I, want, I want Gwent. That's the only game I'll play portable. Gwent from uh, The Witcher 3. That is my favorite card game ever. What is that game uh, available on? Isn't it just consoles? It's Gwent. It's on consoles. Yeah. I think it's on PC as well. I think they have a... Um, a flash version available on PC that you can play, but they, they changed it. They changed it. They made it more uh, convoluted, we should say, mm-hmm. uh, in the actual standalone Gwent game. But Gwent, the actual Witcher game, you know, it took me a long time because Kate made me play The Witcher with her because she beat it and wanted me to play it. And when I finally figured out how to play that game, it was so oh, so uplifting, so, so magical, oh. such a such a magical card game. Uh, and and that's beastly thoughts. That's the last bit of news for What? Me. Already? Uh, yeah, Robbie, no this gives you an extra hour to go eat some brownies, man. <laughs> no, yeah, like, oh, no. Brownie, yeah, brownie no. time. I'm already right, pretty guys, hungry, but. Just to let you guys know that in the future, we might start doing something towards the end of the show. Might ask you basic questions. I'm going to go over a couple questions now. <gasps> it's going to be like this. Only a couple of them. It's only going to be a couple to give you guys a preview, see if you like it or not. All right. Um, they're going to be like. Sort of like trivia questions. Some of them, some of them, I'm going to describe something, and you have to name what it is. My so body is ready. You guys ready. will be going there. Let's see. Out of these questions right here, let's see how many of you guys will get right. Okay. All right. So let's start off with the basic. Oh right? boy, here we go. What is Mega Man called in Japan? Rockman. Basically, got right away. What happened, Robbie? You weren't even, you weren't even close. That was a warm up. That was. Supposed I don't to be know this warm-up. stuff. Man, you got to research, man. If you want to be a, a gamer, you got to do so. We got you, though, Robbie. Don't worry. I know you're going to get the next ones, all right? What is the best-selling video game console of all time? PS2. We. Oh, Robbie got it right away. It was the PS2. I sold the Wii. Oh, 120, versus, oh shit. 120 versus 100 million. Knock my mic over. No, well, P, the... The PS2 was Hold at up. like 150 something million. There were 160 million total. Oh. It's like way, way okay, different. Good. But because if you're looking at consoles and and like just consoles, then all of a sudden the the Nintendo has two different um, handheld consoles that sold well. And then the next console, believe it or not, is actually um, another PlayStation console that outsells the Wii. So you still got all that there. But anyway, so that's PS2 right there. Um, all right, now I'm going to go a little detail, give you some facts, and you guys have to guess which one is. Oh, right, boy. Who this is. Okay. All right. I rescued a princess. Mario. I never say a word in a video game. Master Chief. However, in my cartoon, I'm known for saying, well, excuse me, princess. 
Who am I? I'll go over again. I rescued a princess. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I, don't I know. never say a word in a video game. However, in my cartoon, I'm known for saying, well, excuse me, princess. Silent Belmont? <laughs> Yo, if anyone in the comments, Robbie, can you see if anyone's guessing that right now? Yeah, I want to see the comments. Anyone have it? <laughs> anyone have guesses? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I would say, look at the comments. Right? I know, no, say. no one said anything yet. All right. So the answer for that one is Link. Oh, Zelda. shit. I forgot about that Link shit never cartoon. says a word in the video game. Yeah. But yeah. when he does talk, it was in a cartoon, and that's what he was known for. And he now. said it real stupid cartoon. and cheesy like that, too. He yes. said it just like him. Oh, he said just like, all right. So I am super fast and only get faster with special shoes. Sonic. Sonic. Okay, nice. What is the name of the three triangles in the Legend of Zelda? Triforce. Triforce. Beastly. Uh, yeah, yeah, Robbie. <laughs> Beastly is just this much quick. I'm just like, right, oh, yeah, that's with... the answer. I'm tired of never getting the girl. Of course, I kidnap her all the time. Bowser. I used to be a king, Bowser. but then I changed my name for some stupid reason. Maybe that's why I take out my anger at that stupid plumber. Bowser. Yeah, Bowser. Yeah, it's, so, it's Bowser. There you go. It used to be Ken Cooper. So that was the whole point. Of that. That's funny. <laughs> All right. That I was a great one. I can't believe I can think yeah. as well as I can right now. <laughs> yeah. I am the original console for a company that is known for creating software. Sometimes people don't know what to call me because the newest generation of my console is named similar to me. Wait, who am I again? I was going to say something Nintendo related. Hold sure. on, do it again. I am the original console for a company that is known for creating software. Sometimes people don't Xbox know One. what to call me. Because the newest generation of my console original is Xbox. similar to me. Who am I? Xbox. You guys Xbox are both close. Xbox it's one. just Xbox. That's what I say. Uh, <laughs> no one knows what to call them. <laughs> that's a that's smart a one. Point. I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right. I am a console that's named after a planet. Forget the big three. My company was part of the big two. Console that's named after a planet. Oh my god. Um, I am a no console man. That's, no. that's not that is planet. named after a planet. Forget the big three. My Saturn. company was part of the big two. There you go. Oh. The second Saturn. I couldn't think of it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see what else. I got. I'll do great. one more. One more. Everyone thinks I'm a girl, but I'm really a boy. My friend is super fast, but I always keep up with him. People prefer to use this game since I can fly. Yep, it's Tails of Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh, All right, dude. that's it. I just that was so cool, Hector. Right that was awesome. Especially that the last great. couple of questions were really good. I like the Xbox I, One question. That was yeah, smart. That was those smart. are like some challenging ones right there. That I got cool. I got a bunch more that I created, so you guys will start seeing that. I yeah. want to do like a little point system and stuff like that. See which one's the winner for the week. We'll do that in the future, but mm -hmm. give okay, you guys okay. a preview of stuff uh, to come. That that to me was like the most fun segment ever. That was cool. that's <laughs> that really was cool. Great, and, and imagine how well Robbie will do when he's not inundated with the uh, brownie dust. <laughs> it's like some questions I just kind of splurt out the answers. Some I was like I don't even know. That was a ton of fun. <laughs> that was awesome. So uh, now that we've done with the show and we've seen what what Mister Not Too Nerdy has in store for us in the future, not saying you have to do it every week, but whenever you can. You know what's that one was thing we haven't talked about? If you guys are interested, though. Sure. Red Dead Redemption 2 gameplay. Haven't seen it. Oh, oh no, no, no. What? You it. haven't? Yeah. Dude, it looks... It. Yeah, I, oh, I my it. God. That game looks incredible. Holy cow. Uh, This is my thoughts on it, right? And it's going to be think? a game that I buy. It's a game that I'm going to buy. Yeah. But uh, it's... Rockstar games are a little heavy for me at this point. Because um, it's like... Uh, a little bit too much in the pot, basically? No, it's, it's, it's exactly what I said earlier. Uh, Rockstar games... They grab you by your arm, they twist your shit, and they say, "Bitch, don't put your hand in my back my back pocket and walk with me." And you're like, you put your hand in your back back pocket of Rockstar, you walk with them. You can't play anything else. Uh, once you get involved, oh, it's such that's such so a heavy good. it's yeah. such a heavy experience. See, I'm 38 now, and the reason that I've I've kind of shied away from like RPGs a little bit, uh, I did recently rebeat Final Fantasy 12, but it's because they require so much dedication. Yeah. Rockstar games 
are the same way. Once you get started, once you see that intro, the prologue, and, and you get started and you're driving or riding a horse, uh, you're fucked because you, you want to continue on and you're chasing that carrot on a stick. And once you see something else, you want to go to the next. And I, I just feel like I like to have my freedom. You know, I, I like you got a nice ass, but there's plenty of asses for me to look at. You know what I mean? Especially October, yeah, and September, we got a lot of games coming out, and people are getting out. Of I mean, I'm, I'm going. To, I'm going to get the game. So you said, oh, everyone October is. October and November, we have a lot of asses. Out. Asses, Wait, asses, out. Like, <laughs> lots of asses, asses coming. Out. What are you talking? About? <laughs> yeah, along with Red Dead too. There's a lot of asses to go around. A lot to share. The game you know? looks. The game looks uh, unbelievable. Um, and yeah, it, it looks like a Rockstar game. I can't wait to see how they've like upped the ante graphically compared to GTA 5 because GTA 5 is how old? Six years old? Yeah, five years old. And the, the most insane thing about Rockstar games is just how detailed they are. You know what I mean? Like the, like just with the environment, the characters, just the details and every I mean, little thing. If, if you take into account games that are coming out now, recent games, many of them don't look as good as GTA 5. And GTA 5 came out for last generation That's true. consoles. Yeah, and they really take advantage of hardware. So like, like especially we, that trailer, it looks this unreal. Will be, this will be the, the first tr uh, time that we've seen Rockstar develop anything per it, specifically for the, the newer console generation. It's not going to be tethered by the seventh generation. It's made for the eighth and beyond. Yeah. So uh, this is going to be you know a history-making game. I can't wait to see it. I want to see how the game runs, though. That's what I'm curious about. 30 frames, 30 frames. Get used to that. No, I meant like the way it runs. Is it stable now? Or is oh, it... Well, I'm sure there's plenty of stables. There's horses everywhere. Um, <laughs> you don't have to worry about stables. you got plenty. It's stable. you got stables. stables everywhere. Hey, yeah, you know, it's going to be plenty you know, stable. The performance like, is going to be more stable than any other game. Stable over there. Oh, man, there's I, stables everywhere. It'll be very runs. stable. Don't even worry about it. Stables <laughs> everywhere. I'm excited. Um... This is what's happening to me. It's a sad thing, but it's a reality. As I've slowed down my my trickle of YouTube videos, I'm going. I'm probably going to make one today because I actually have some political stuff on my mind. Mm -hmm. But starting this business and 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 focusing on that, and I still have my other job. It's just been so hard, you know, for me yeah, to. It's like on. now I have a handful of games I even know are coming out, and pretty soon I'm going to look and it's going to be out. I'm going to say, what? It's been out for two weeks. You know, run to PayPal and buy it. Yeah. Because everything else, I think it took me 36 years to finally grow up. <laughs> That's the problem for me too, though. Just like as I get older, I know I'm not as old as you guys, but like I, my life gets more involved. Thanks for throwing that shit at us, but go ahead. Continue. I, I didn't mean say. it that way. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> no, I'm just setting an example. So I'm a bit younger, but as, well, because I'm an adult now, and at, like young adult, and as, you know, I get older, I'm fine, there's more involvement, there's just more stuff to do outside of gaming in my real life, so, like, yeah. it's almost Doesn't to a point, suck? yeah, it does kind of suck, but it's almost to a point where, you know, it's just, like, there's so many games, and it gets overwhelming to the point where there's so much to play, you almost don't want to play anything, you know what I mean? Like, there's just so much that you want to play nothing. I'm in a really fucked up spot, That can happen right? because sometimes. I have this PC, I, I got that. the Switch, I got my Xbox, right, but I showed you guys a picture when I was downloading, uh, Black Ops 4, the beta, there's 384 games on my PlayStation 4. Oh, Jesus. Three, 384. Wow. And so many of them I haven't even played. And I'm plagued by stupidity that whenever there's a flash sale, whenever there's a weekly deal, you, gotta you buy guys it. know what I'm Me talking too. about. Yeah. I'm in there, and Kate comes in here, she's like, why? Why are you? How many do you have inside the, uh, you know, your car? I said, it's only three games. She's like, why would you buy it, though? You, you know you're not going to play it. I said, because... What if the world comes to an end? What if and I do one have, day? Yeah, you only have one day left. I say this is the game I wanted to play. <laughs> I, I just collect the shit, and there's no way for me to ever get through it. And so it's like I play three or four games on a continual basis, and I just look at the other game and go, "Ha, I own." One you. day I'll get and to go, that. Yeah, and it's like with the Steam library too. You see all these games sitting there that you haven't installed that you bought in sales over the years. Well, I, I got some vacation time left this this year, and. Uh, Rather than do what I used to do on my vacations, I'd, I'd take a whole week and just make a shit ton of videos. Mm -hmm. I think I want to just take a week and play some games that are that you have to actually dedicate time to. So yeah. I can. Oh, yeah. I love that. Sh I love that shirt too. Heck. Which one? You looking man. dapper? Yeah, but uh, the one thing though, I've been waiting to set this up to get settled in. I wanted to make videos again. You know, I have not been making videos at all. I didn't have time whatsoever, and that's what I'm saying, Robbie. As you get older, you start to lose time between work and 
I, uh, you know, I have a social life at all. Like, we really, five kids, five yeah, kids. Yeah, well, I don't have five kids. Thank goodness. No one claimed anything pull either by me. But um, <laughs> just like. <laughs> Beastly. <laughs> so, like. You didn't pull out um, early enough five times in a row. What are you doing? I didn't, I didn't pull out at all. I just fell asleep. Yeah, I pulled out <laughs> games strong. But anyway. Um, <laughs> That's where the kids ended up. So, yeah. like, I want to go through some games. I'm going to start streaming a lot more. Like, that's why I want to do stream, like, a little bit more and stuff like that. So, if you guys want to get down and play games, let me know. I'd like, I to, legit man. have man, everything set so up, as you see now. I'm officially when, when set are you up. Gonna be, when are you going to be ready to stream and, and what day? And let me know the day and I'll I'm be I'm going to start tomorrow, I believe so. What like, time? So I, I got everything. Um, I don't know. As soon as I wake up, Hit me probably. on Twitter. Let me know. What are you going to be playing? I got to make sure. I, have. Uh, I actually want to, I don't know. Like, uh, if you guys want to do multiplayer, jump with you guys. I was going to actually download Dead Cells Black and like, try Beta. playing that. Let's do that. Um. Very but that's uh, it's only PC right now, right? It's open. Yeah, and it's what? only Black Ops Four. Yeah, it's open for it's... P PC. It's or, open right now. It... Yes, as of for today. PS4 or PC? PC. Okay. Yeah. I just make sure it's PC. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You guys want to do that? Yes. Hundred yeah, percent. I'm going to be playing that today quite a bit are. too. So I'm probably going to do tomorrow though. Like you want to do tomorrow then? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, but like that. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to start streaming more. I have the setup now. Once I put a green screen behind me as well, sometimes when I show like a retro, I'm going to be doing like retro weeks, I think. Like a one one day a week, I'll just play retro games. I kind of want to play these old games. I mean, I want to like take a game and play that and see what it's like actually play live because I have all the stuff to do that now. And like, I'm like, that's oh, yeah. what I got to go through it. Like, if you talk about a backlog full of games, look behind me. Like, that's a backlog <laughs> full of fucking games. Have like, fun yeah, going I mean, through like, those, yeah. Let alone the new things. Like, there's a whole bunch of games that, like, I've only played when I was testing it. And I'll be there playing it for, like, an hour and a half just to make sure it works when I bought it. Mm -hmm. Besides that, that's all I played for some of these let games. Let me give you guys a, a great game I'm sure you both probably already own, but it's one that I love to play with people because it's so fun. It's super old, but it runs great, and, and when it came out, it was the shiznit. Left 4 Dead 2. Mm, I do oh, yeah. own that. Yes, on Steam. Well, Left 4 Dead 2 was my favorite, though. Yes, Left 4 Dead 2 right. is the shit. Right. Uh, and and it, it runs really well on, on uh, PC, on Steam. And it's super cheap. I think it's like five or six bucks. And it, that would be one. Ooh, man. You guys heard that? Yeah. yeah. That's there, the light. That's a thunderstorm. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that was, oh, damn. That was shit. Shit. <laughs> that's the same sound I hear when that guy opens his coat and sells me shit too. Ooh, that scares shit out of me. Like I was like, <laughs> damn, yeah. All right. I hear that. Well, I'm I'm over here on uh, Call of Duty Black Ops PC site, and I'm looking for where to download the beta. And uh, Blizzard, I don't see no, it. use the Blizzard app. Blizzard. Oh, just use. Okay. Yeah. That works. Beastly, you're overcomplicating things. Why are you doing this? I, I like to be convoluted. Slow clap, Hector. Slow clap for Beastly. <gasps> there it is. Well done, Beastly. You got I your, see it. Got your shit together. Good job. It says play now. I'm, I'm going to play it now after it installs like 30 gigs on my PC. Yeah. Don't worry about it, oh. Beastly. Joe would have been even more dysfunctional with that kind of thing. Joe? No, Joe, Joe, together. I think he, he, he just learned how to use Google. It's crazy. Okay. Joe just Joe just bought a house. And nice. He has, he has PSVR. Cool. He has PSVR. He has tons of games now. Uh, and uh, he just went to... Uh, Universal Studios. Him and he his got wife. it together that much. I don't know if he got it together, but he's doing. He's trying. Hey, <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's better than he, not trying. He's doing the. Yeah, he's doing the best he can. He wants to be like his younger brother, but his dick will never be this big. All right, <laughs> so I found it. He's trying. He's trying. He's gonna try. All right, so I'm. I'm here. Is we there can a talk light show going on? What is happening after? <laughs> <laughs> That is the show, you know. I mean, I thought like I'll do like a little light, lighter effect over That's here. That's beautiful. Ah. Tripping me out a little bit. Is it? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, a little bit. Found it's you. It's funny. Yo, okay, <laughs> that's too much. All right, <laughs> all right guys. Awesome. So we're going to uh, end the stream now. Um, okay, it's requiring a restart. We end the stream now because I'm sure a lot of people don't want to watch us talk about this stuff. We yeah. they can just find us online and we can play and talk about things together. I want to thank everybody for joining us today for Beastly Thoughts Live episode seven. Uh, we we come to you every Saturday at two o'clock, besides today, uh, and talk gaming news of the week. And we get together with our friends and our family. And I just want to say I appreciate everybody for tagging along. You can always find us on Twitter as well. I'm Beastly Gamer Max, uh, Mr. Not Too Nerdy. Where are you at on Twitter? Um, at not too nerdy, so N O T T 
<laughs> no, sorry. No, sorry. What? <laughs> Are you high too? K-N-O-T. Nerdy. Um, yeah, so just make sure you follow me there. Also, subscribe to you're not a YouTube viewer. Sorry, I haven't been posting. But uh, I will be posting there, Not Too Nerdy and Not Too Nerdy Retro. So definitely go check me out there and uh, subscribe because I'll be doing that. But Twitch is where it's going to be at. I know I'm going to be live streaming a lot of shit. I got a backlog of games I need to get through and I, I want to get through. So I just want to have fun and just sit down and relax. That's why I have a display behind me, nice and neat, so that mm -hmm. you guys can look at the games there. And I'll grab a new game for the day and we'll play it out. Hell yeah. And we'll definitely play some new games as it comes out too. Now, so that's now, pretty lit. If your, wind, if your window was a door... I would think it was the gateway to heaven <laughs> because it, it just, you know, you're walking through the things that you love, you know, games on both sides, retro stuff that you can't find anywhere to oh, yeah. you open up the doors. It's just nothing but naked women playing PlayStation. It's oh my just, God. Yeah, I, I want that. It's cool cause like, I each got one the, is, each one is Kate, by the way. Okay. A little more creepy now. Well, you're married. I, I feel a little weird now. Like, it's all this. <laughs> here, so. Now look, uh, the last episode of Revolver Live, which we didn't do, uh, for people who don't oh. know, Revolver Live is another podcast I did. Uh, we, we came up with random topics. And one of the topics I came up with for the last show that we never got to do was, would you, if you had to cl clone yourself or your spouse, which one would you choose? And how would things work at home? Because they'd have to come back home. And so I actually thought about this shit for a week. The clone actually has your memories up until the moment that they got cloned. So if you clone yourself, they're going to leave the cloning office, come back to your house, and they're going to feel like they're you. What would happen? I mean, would you let another you sleep in you know, your house? What if he wanted the bed because he felt like he was you? What if he wanted your wife? And that's wait. why I decided I would definitely choose Kate. She wait. would be the clone. Wait, time out, time out, time out, time out. So you're saying you could be a clone. You could clone yourself. Or your you're... spouse. Wait, so is that considered cheating? If yourself is doing someone else, but that's not really you. <laughs> I, Good deep yeah. question. Oh my <laughs> so, god. I think so. I think it would because if they have your memories, right? A clone of myself would come here. What if you and cheat on you with yourself with another clone of you? Wait, what? Wait, time out. You said you're cheating. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> cheat would, on you I, with wonder, yourself. <laughs> because if you kill yourself, would it be murder anyway? Um. The, the way I think it would be cheating is if I clone myself, the clone would come home and immediately feel a kinship with my family. It would want to kiss Kate. It would want to uh, raise the children and make sure they're safe. Ooh. If any, if anything, the clone and myself would work together. Uh, you know, and that's my, my mentality. You know, sometimes a clone would say, hey, babe, let's go back to the bedroom. Yeah. And I look and I look and I go, all right, I'll see you in about an hour. Okay. She go, God, I got to go twice. It is what it is. I like uh, uh, DJ's answer too. Clone spouse, best threesome ever. That's why I told her. <laughs> that's, yeah, said, that's, that's Kate, an idea. Kate said, Kate said she wouldn't, but I told her she would because the clone would want to sleep with me just like she does. The clone, would, and if anything, she says, I'll never fight over a man. I said, not even me? She said, no. Then I said, what if it was fighting yourself? And that's how this whole thing came up. What if you had to fight your clone for me? And so, yeah, I'd have a Kate on each side. And, you know, my daughter would be, like, jumping over me to get from one titty to the next, you know, because in the middle of the night, the baby. It would just be a fiasco. It would be All incredible. Right. Yeah. Basically, and, like, and straight up, clone, clone yourself because then it would be like, like, I look at the time, like, look at myself, be like, don't you got work to go to? Get the hell out of the house. And I kick my, myself out, let them go to work. I'm just chilling the whole day. Yo, that's what that's I told, an that's, idea. That's what I told Kate, right? I said, if I, if I could clone myself. I can have a full-time streaming YouTube beastly and a full-time lab, lab, you know, I, I run a laboratory downtown. You have two lines and reap the benefits from all of them. And t-shirt yeah. uh, beastly. And so I could like, or I could say, I don't feel like working today. I look over at the other one and say, I'm going to need you to go today. And he, he'd be like, man, fuck you. I went yesterday. And I said, hey, look. Hey, too bad. You're the clone. If it weren't for me, you wouldn't be here. Man, bro. you're my clone. I provided for you. Yeah. And if he, it weren't for you, you, you know, wouldn't be born. One of us will work three days a week. One will yeah. work two days a week. Remember who gave birth to you. I am your clone. You say, Mom, you. you fuck. <laughs> yeah. What about you guys? If you had a clone of yourself, do you think they'd be? Heck. I'm a single guy, so this is a terrible now. question. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you or your guy, spouse. But, but but what would happen? I mean, if he had all your memories up until the moment he got cloned, and he came to stay with you in your house right now, mm -hmm. 
Would you fight? Would you guys get along? But, you get along with him. I mean, well, we play flea wrestle and like. cuddle on the couch. The yo, problem we, we is spoon. I have this, oh, yeah. right? If I, if I was, That's if what I was we do, smart enough We just to, spoon on the couch. If I was smart enough to clone myself, right, it would become like clone inception. What if my clone clone himself too? And then all of a sudden there's a yeah, whole the chain clones of clone the clones. That, it's like fucking gremlins. Don't eat that crap. The don't clones clone that. the clones and then the clones make more clones. You're damn smart bastards. Stop cloning yourself again. <laughs> like they, they all clone themselves and they gang up on me and kick my ass. I ain't having that. <laughs> you see Hector, Hector would be in every yard sale in Jersey and every single one. Like, I Suddenly saw you're you. just in a dark room with a bunch of clones of yourself. <laughs> and you hear the lights go off and then... My clone Big army. You. See, I could do it, man. That would be awesome. Or you could be a super criminal because you can go and rob a bank, but you could have everyone at work say you were there. You know, they say, where, where were you at yesterday at 6 o'clock? But I was at work having lunch with the CEO of the company, my manager, the ship supervisor, and everybody else. And I was a center of attention. Yeah, and you can't next, say that wasn't a version of me. Next thing you know, I got arrested by a guy that looked just like me. <laughs> 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 I just thought it was a funny, you know, kind of weird topic. Uh, you know, the way that technology is moving and, and, and what science is trying to do anyway is one upping nature. I think at some point in time, there's going to be this move to if you lose a child, uh, if you they already do it with animals. Mm. You guys do know that, right? Mm -hmm. You can have your dog or your cat cloned. I think it's like 35 grand. Ooh. Can you imagine that? You know, my cat, she's she's uh, nine years old, 10 years old. And she's had dead eyes since the moment I met her. So just to resurrect those dead, dark eyes for 35 bucks, $35,000. $35,000. 35 right. bucks. Yeah, Jeez, right. that would be awesome. Let's <laughs> yeah, go over to India and get that done. <laughs> Give me the needle, Karapara. Give me the needle. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's a funny topic. I, but I do think at some point in time they're going to they're gonna do it. If they haven't already in some uh, secret covens. Because the, the technology totally exists now to clone. Mm-hmm. It's it's an ethical thing. Oh, it's pretty fascinating. Yeah, how fast it's it, 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 it's it violates a lot of ethics, and I think a lot of people want you know some people look at it as kind of a god complex. You're creating life. You're 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 going above and beyond the mandate of mankind when you're able to create a life and alter DNA like that. Would you guys like if you had a, an old pet and you could have it cloned? Would you do it? Oh man, nah. For the, the possibility of it dying real quick though. Um... What about no, the possibility of living a long time? I mean, what if they, what if the technology yeah, was but clone DNA has a lot of defects in it, so I feel like part of life, it. like you wanna you wanna let go. And I don't think if you can't let go of uh, a loved one or someone that you cared about, then like you're gonna have a lot more problems in life. So you're it's gonna be rough, man. That's something that you're supposed to learn to let go, even though it's tough. Yeah. That's why it's like instead of bringing back if, grandma from the grave over yeah. and over again, cloning what her. If, you know? You, you know that there's technology now where women are artificially inseminated with the – and they carry the child in a healthy uterus because another female can't. Right. They'll yeah. take the woman's DNA. They'll fertilize it with her husband's DNA, and then they'll insert the, the egg into the healthy uterus of the Surrogate carrier. Surrogate mother. Yeah, yeah, this happens a lot. What if they did that, they did that but they clone yourself, like your wife was carrying you? Whew. How oh fucking awesome would that be? Heck? Yo, you're having a baby because you, you, literally you. Yeah, I, you know, look, I had a shitty life growing up. My mom, you know, she did. She was poor. She was running around chasing these guys and wasn't focused. We used to have mayonnaise sandwiches sometimes. Fuck that shit. This beastly would have tartar and, and T-bones and sirloins at two. And he'd be enjoying his life. And to me, that would just be the most awesome thing ever to look at a a baby version of yourself. Please name him no. Bald Beast Love too. What if do you just <laughs> That's a great what name. What if you just King said Beast Love. Yeah, like what King if you Beast just Love. described the whole storyline for Death Stranded? Yeah, this what is a plot. <laughs> <laughs> what, if you, what if this was just a setup, everyone? And he's gonna be like, just kidding. Beastly's this been is Kojima what all Death along. Is gonna be about. <laughs> it's just like you getting ideas I mean? for Death Stranded. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I may have just given Death Stranding ideas because they don't know what the this fuck This is going to be in the game now. <laughs> Could you was like, you son of a bitch. Damn, like, I wish I'd thought of that. I, you know, come, come to think of it, there has I don't think there has even been a movie like that. Where, Shit, I got to clone uh, children person, in my own game. You know, your, your wife carries you as a child and you raise yourself. Let's make a movie, that, guys. Let's make that, that, would that a be movie. A great, that, that would be an interesting film. Look, well, we're going to get together. We're going to make that movie, okay? Well, what if like that's what we'll he's that, actually yes. carrying on Death Stranding? Though? What if that is his clone? And that's why he's carrying it. 
I don't know because those Very babies seem to have some. They have like a sentient thought. You know, you see them like they all have the thumb in their what mouth. If look that, what if like that is your clone and you have to take care of them? See, you just open up a whole. It's a survival new game, Pandora's learning where you box, can't let yourself you just, die. Yo, you <laughs> just screwed up my mind. You blew my yeah. blown right now. Kojima's like, you son of a bitch, just gave away my whole video game. Yeah. You just single handedly destroyed the sales with that stranded. Just letting you know. What if it's <laughs> literally. What if it's literally like a survival game where you have to take care of yourself, and as your clone's health deteriorate, <laughs> your health deteriorates, and then it's more difficult to take oh, care of them. You man. see more paranormal shit. It gets and that's that explains the paranormal stuff. All that paranormal, paranormal shit that you're seeing though yeah. are people that lost themselves and their clone. That's yeah. what we're and then seeing. You, you and your clone are just going down that oh, path, and you know it's slower and slower. Now you're flipping the script yeah. back on me. Now go. I'm really intrigued, and it's <laughs> so stupid. Just made up off the top of our heads. Death we need a Death Stranding theory. Theories but, podcast now. <laughs> yeah, I, see, I see what you did. That you related to games. You're talking about cloning, but that's what you're going for. I got it. You got, got me, you. heck. You got me. We got True you. story. True story. All right, guys. <laughs> I, I, think that, I think that's it. For that's the a show good today. note to end it on. I love you guys so fucking much. <laughs> Death Stranding confirmed. Storyline. <laughs> we just basically confirmed the whole plot of the game. <laughs> Kojima, please uh, work with us. I tell you right now, if it turns out to be a freaking clone, I'm gonna crack up. I'm just saying now. After all that, if that baby turns out to be a clone of him, I'm done. I was <laughs> like, yo, I'm done. <laughs> like, before we end the show, right? Before we end the show, Kate and I watched Jurassic World. We went and saw it uh, yesterday, the new Jurassic mm. Park film. Have either of you seen that? Yes, I thought it was pretty decent. I People are hating it. on it. It was the worst Jurassic Park film I've ever seen. I mean, it was such a basic movie, but it was just fun to watch. Like I didn't. The rest of the movie was kind of trashy. Just, yeah. But. See, Kate, Kate, she loves Jurassic Park because her father, he watches like three movies on repeat for like twenty years in a row. One of them happens to be the original Jurassic Park, and then the other movies are all the uh, uh, James Bond films. Yeah. So he loves those. You know what? And, I won't spoil she, it though. I thought the ending was pretty cool though in Fallen Kingdom. Like just the potential for like the next movie. Like no, that whole because thing. Uh, if, if it's going in the direction of this film with uh, the the cookie cutout characters and and the stupid shit that they added, like yeah. oh here's a plot twist that's so pointless we don't even know how to put it in the film. It was like uh, no, it was it was pretty yeah, mindless. No like, it was a mindless. I'm not going to spoil it, but yeah. trust me, it's not Jurassic Park. It's not Jurassic Park of old. You know, and when you look at the original Jurassic Park, these characters see Doctor Grant, Doctor Malcolm. Uh, I forget the girl's name. Was it Sarah? But uh, these characters seemed likable and they seemed relatable and they seemed it seemed like they were just caught in a really fucked up situation and they were yeah. trying to survive. Right. Now, when you take that uh, narrative and you give every character in your film a, a Indiana Jones slash Superman complex where every single thing that happens to them is like the movie 2012 where they're right on the cusp of death. Everyone. But somehow they're all they all yeah. look up. But not only do they look up, each character look up looks up like twenty times during the film, back to back, uh, and then all the the the, the uh, antagonists, the bad guys, have the opposite effect, where nothing works out for them, and you see it, and it's like, it's so unrelatable, and it's like yeah, they, yeah. They, they went from having characters like in the original film that seemed like they escaped by the hair of their teeth, to characters that you feel like are un. Beatable. They can't be harmed. They can't be hurt. It's like uh, uh, a superhero movie. You know the superhero is not going to die because they're the, they're the no. superhero. Yeah. And and when they when they go that far with the main characters of a Jurassic Park film, where nothing hurts them, nothing harms them. They never even when they're when you're underwater, suspending belief for like two minutes, swimming around, holding a knife, smiling at people, and and it's supposed to be a dire straight situation. These characters have suspended the, the possibility of reality, and now the movie has become a parody of what it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be about the, the the dinosaurs and how magnificent and majestic they were, and then how some people realized, like Dr. Malcolm, yeah, it's nice and fun for now, but pretty soon there's yelling and, and, and screaming. You guys remember Jeff Goldblum saying that yeah. there was a real there was a realistic, uh, you know, look at this situation. Now these films have no Jeff Goldblums. This one literally had him in it for like a second. Yeah, he was but, there for literally five minutes. But there's no less. one, there's nobody saying, this is a fucking horrible situation. Uh, this is, going any further in this direction will only result in more of the catastrophes we've seen oh, in yeah. the last five movies. There's no one doing that. And it just, and on top of that, you got this superhero complex. Even a little girl in this film 
somehow has a cape and she's able to pull off shit that you're like, was she trained with Leon Kennedy? What's what's going on? You know, yeah. it just blew my mind. And I, I sat next to Kate watching it and I looked over at her and she was just doing this the whole time <laughs> because she grew up watching the original. And that's a part of her heritage. Yeah, it makes no sense. It really and does. And they shat matter. all. That's they true. just completely destroyed the, the franchise, if you ask me. Yeah. Just wanted to end on that note. I didn't I hate it, but like, it was, it was mindless. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. See it whenever you can, Mr. Not Too Nerdy. So I will. You can come back I will. and bash yeah. it. We, we have think... given it such great praise. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, approved. Oh, wow. I've only got, ooh, eight minutes until it's fully installed. Man, my internet's fast as hell. What's that? Uh, Black Ops 4. Nice. Let's get on that. I'll be I down fixed a bit. the speech for my internet, though. too, by the way. Remember before I was only getting like 800 megabits per second? I changed it to 7. I got Cat 7E now, like going around all over. So it's no longer hey, nice Cat 5E. It's Cat 7E, yeah. which is the most you can get right now. I got, now a, cat, I got a Cat 7. Yeah, that's yeah, what that's, I used to. That's why like, I use that through everything, though, now. like That's why I had it. I realized... From the way they set it up, they use their cable. I switch it to all mine, so everything's nice. a lot faster now. Oh yeah, so it works. way faster if you get like better, faster. Oh, and cables. I had Netgear, um, the Nighthawk over there to extend it to my bedroom. Had like it's like weird reception. I have all like Echo devices and different things there. Everything now works on like full bars. There's no, you cannot drop it anywhere in this place, which is so awesome. The range That's for cool. the extender yep. is amazing, and like. I even get perfect 5G reception wherever I go. And usually 5G is blocked between walls. You could close the doors or whatever, and it doesn't drop at all, 5G, which is awesome. Just letting you know. <laughs> my 5G only works on uh, two pieces of hardware I have in this house, my LG uh, UH1100 TV and my PS4 Pro. Mm-hmm. Those are the only two are able to, to accept it. Fifth time in a row. Thank you guys for checking us out. We'll That's week. been Beastly Thoughts Live, baby. Hopefully you all have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't even know where I'm going with this. I don't know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> I'm basically, I'm pretty out of it though today. But yeah, it's been fun. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, though. We'll be live again next weekend, next Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Smoking be there, baby. Hey, it's going to be a lot of fun. We do the show every weekend. Uh, beastly. <laughs> this is a video game podcast. We have a lot of fun. Saturdays, Gross. 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time. We love you all. Bye, DJ. Bye, everyone else. I love you. This has been all over the place, but we're, we're thank you for joining us. Go get a brownie. <laughs>